In this video, we'll look at three different methods we can use to achieve this 3D text effect in Inkscape. Let's begin by creating the circle that we'll use to create the 3D effects. To do this, we can go to the Circles and Ellipses tool here and click and drag while holding down the control key. Now we can open the Fill and Stroke dialog with this button up here, and I'll give the circle an orange fill. Now let's click this button to give it a linear gradient. I'll select the bottom stop in the list here, raise the alpha channel all the way up, and make it more of a yellow. And we'll be able to change these colors later. Okay, now let's go to the Select tool, and while holding Control to maintain the width to height ratio, let's make the circle pretty small. Then let's move it over here out of the way. Alright, so the first method we can use to do 3D writing is by drawing our own text using the pen tool here. And if we want to easily get some smooth curves in our text, we can go up to the mode option here and change it to B-spline mode. This mode will automatically create curves for us as we click points in the canvas. To finish drawing the path, we can right click or press enter. If we want to keep our letters somewhat lined up, we can drag from the ruler at the top of the canvas to create horizontal guides. I'll draw a D using two separate paths. And if we want, we can go to the node tool and adjust the nodes a bit. Now we want to select all of these paths and combine them together by going up to the path menu and choosing combine. This allows us to work on the paths as if they're a single path. And if we're done using the guides, we can drag them back up to the ruler. Next we want to select our circle again we want to make it so the circle is above the path instead of below it like it is now. To do this, we can click this button up here that says Raise Selection to Top. We can now move the circle out of the way again, then select both the circle and the path, and go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Scatter. If we click Live Preview here, we can see that Scatter makes copies of the circle along the path. To add many more copies, we need to use a negative number for the space between copies setting. If we go too low, we get this error message. We can close this out and try slightly larger numbers until we find the smallest number it will let us use. It looks like negative 60 is the smallest number I can use. This number depends on the size of the object we're copying, so you will likely have to use a number that's different from mine. Okay, I'm also going to uncheck the Follow Path Orientation option, which gives the tubes a winding effect. We also want to change the original Pattern Will Be setting to Cloned. This will make it so if we change things like the size or colors of the circle, it will also change the tubes. Now we can click the apply button and close out this dialog. So the result that we get with scatter is a group consisting of all the little circle copies that are used to create the tube shapes. If we double click the group to enter into it, we can select the individual circles. I don't like how the 3 is overlapping the D, so I'm going to select all of the D circles, being careful not to select any of the 3 circles, then move them to the right while holding control to restrict the movement on the horizontal axis. Now I'll double click the canvas to get outside the group. We can also see that the original path we drew is still here. We can go ahead and delete it now if we want. Okay, so using this method isn't too bad if we just want to draw a few letters, like maybe for a logo type. However, if we want to apply this effect to a full sentence, for example, drawing the individual letters can be pretty time consuming. So let's look at two more efficient methods. For method number two, let's go to the text tool here and click inside the canvas. I'll type let's go as an example. Now, as we'll see in a bit, it doesn't matter which font family we use for this method, so we can just leave it on the default. We can, however, go to the Select tool and scale up the text while holding the Control key. Next, with the text object selected, let's go up to Extensions, Text, Hershey Text. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. So what Hershey Text does is, it gives us some options for stroke or engraving fonts, which are useful for things like cutting machines. In the list here, we can see a number of stroke fonts the Inkscape provides for us. This includes fonts that enclose the area of the letters, like Hershey's Sans Medium here, and Hershey's Serif Bold. And it also includes single stroke fonts, like Hershey's Sans One Stroke, Hershey's Script One Stroke, and all of these EMS fonts. We can also download other stroke fonts from the internet, select other here, and type in the location and name of the downloaded font in this box. But anyway, for our purposes, we want to use one of the single stroke fonts. I'll go with EMS Elfin. Now we can click apply and close this out. 
The result we get with this is actually a group within a group. So with this selected, we first want to go up here and click the ungroup button twice. Now all of the letter paths are ungrouped. We now want to combine all the paths together by going to path, combine. Another thing we want to do is smoothen all of these sharp corners, as scatter works much better with smooth curves. To do this easily, we can open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects, click the plus button at the bottom of the dialog, choose simplify here, then increase the steps parameter until it looks pretty smooth. Now we need to finalize the path effect by going to path, object to path. We can now select the circle and raise it to the top again, then also select the text and open the scatter extension dialog. Because we haven't changed the size of the circle, the same spacing settings should still work. Okay, let's go ahead and click apply and close this out. This is definitely a little too thick, so we can select just the circle and shrink it down some while holding control. This will also make the letters thinner. Okay, that's it for method number two. It's definitely not a bad method, but it unfortunately restricts us to using only a few different fonts. So next, we'll look at a method that lets us use pretty much any font we want. For the final method, let's start by creating another text object. I'll just go with Let's Go again. And this time we can choose whatever font family we want. I'll choose something simple like Visby. Now I'll go to the Select tool and scale it up. Okay, so with text created with the text tool, if I go to the Fill and Stroke dialog and turn off the fill color, then go to the Stroke Paint tab and turn on the stroke, we can see that it puts a stroke around the outline of each of the letters. The problem with this is that Scatter will place copies of the circle along the entire outline of each letter, which, trust me, doesn't look very good. What we want is just single lines going to the center of each letter, similar to the way we use single stroke fonts in method number two. To do this, we're going to use the center line tracing method of the trace bitmap dialog. But first, we need to turn off the stroke of the text and give it a fill color again. Now, if you've ever used trace bitmap, you likely know that it only works on bitmaps. It doesn't work on vector art, including the text object. But fortunately, we can easily convert vector art to bitmaps in Inkscape by going to Edit, Make a Bitmap Copy. This creates a bitmap copy of the vector art and places it directly on top. We don't need the vector art anymore, so we can go ahead and delete it. Now to open the Trace Bitmap dialog, we can right-click the bitmap and choose Trace Bitmap. And here we simply want to change the detection mode to centerline tracing, then click Apply. And now we have a path consisting of lines going through the center of each letter. We won't be needing the bitmap anymore. Now because I used a simple font, I don't really have to do much editing on this path. Just to make it a little better though, I'll go to the node tool, select all of the nodes, and click this button up here to turn them into smooth nodes. This will make everything a bit smoother. I also lost the dot at the bottom of the exclamation point. To add it back, I'll go to the pen tool, switch back to Bezier mode, and while holding shift, I'll create a small subpath here. We can now select the circle, raise it to the top again, then also select the text and open the scatter dialog. Because we decreased the size of the circle earlier, we're going to have to use a smaller spacing setting. There we go. I'm going to shrink the circle a little more. And by the way, if we change the colors of the circle, it will also change the colors of the text. And that's it for method number three. Like I mentioned before, because I used a simple font, I didn't have to do much editing to get the 3D effect to look good with this method. If you try this with a more complex font, however, just keep in mind that you will likely have to edit the nodes and curves of the central line tracing path before doing scatter. Okay, so in this video, we learned three different methods for doing 3D tube writing. First, we used the drawing method, which is the most customizable, but also the most time consuming method. For the second method, we use the Hershey text extension to create text with single line fonts. This can give us nice quick results, but we're limited to the fonts that we can use. Finally, we learned the trace bitmap center line tracing method, which allows us to use virtually any font we want, but might require a bit more adjusting to get everything looking good. Let us know in the comments which method you prefer. And if you try out any of these methods, let us know how it went. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching.